itself is owned by the state of Texas, operated by the Alamo Trust, and prepared by the National Park Service. Like the number of agencies have different parts to take care of it, and none of them can agree on the right way to do it. Everyone is a little bit different, and that's kind of like a big headache for us because no one wants to follow the rules. Um, they all say like, "Oh, we don't do that. That's for them to follow. We're not here for historic preservation. We're just here for construction." that we get this, if they do recognize it as an internment, it would help our state for getting state recognition. So right now, our South Carolina Flood Declaration is not a state or federally recognized tribe. Um, right now in Texas, we do have three federally, re federally recognized tribes, but none of the three are from Texas. They have all been displaced off of their tribal land and they're pushed here. The Cushada, Alabama, they are based on the northeast tip of Texas, uh, right at the boundary between us and Louisiana. Uh, and then we have the Lieutenant Apache, but their lineage comes from Northern California, down the coast, the Baja, and then into Mexico. They came great later, like in the late 1800s. And then the last one we have are the Kikapoo, uh, Kikapoo Indians, and they're from Michigan. They got kicked off the reservation and got moved further south. Then someone else came and took over that reservation, kicked them off, moved them further south. And some folks so far south, eventually that they ended up Tierra uh, Negras, Mexico, which is the, the other side of the border for us here in Mexico, the other side of Dallas. And I have memories growing up that uh, we weren't allowed to, to go down to the bridge section. Because when my grandmother's house in Tierra Negras, you can throw a rock into the real ground from the back, from the back of the oh. Right there. Uh, even when you cross the border, you go over bridge number one, you take a right, you go down three blocks to my grandma's house. It's like right there. Like I grew up like in the middle of border culture. Uh, but we always had this thing where the, all the aunties would always tell us that we weren't allowed to go down the bridge because that's where all the Indians live. Because down there was technically considered federal land, and you can you could claim um, federal domicile there, like the way that we have people now claiming um, sanctuary here in the United States. It was the same process back then, but there was nowhere to put them, so they literally had to build their homes under the bridge, and it was like a real shanty. Now I go and visit and there's like a luxury golf park down there. It freaks me out. Uh, this is like how night and day become. Right? Like things have changed. Uh, but of those three tribes, none of them are originally from Texas. Uh, of, the, of all the tribes within the United States, less than 97% are uh, totally recognized. Only 2% of all the tribes in the United States. Not everyone wants federal recognition. Not everybody feels that they need to have that card or that legitimacy from the United States government. Um, here in the U.S., our tribal community is actively trying to get that because it would just save us a lot of headaches, especially with those lawsuits and just claiming ownership to a lot of these properties and these lands. Um, but that's not really long and very, <laughs> as we've learned. We've already, got, and we've already gone to legislate it twice, um, and it's just like a very long, expensive process. Um, we had to fund ourselves, our families to fund themselves, so it's just a little bit of a big uphill battle. Um, I don't really see them ever giving us land back. I don't think that's ever, ever going to really happen here in Texas. Um, but for our tribal community as AIT SDM, we at least just want recognition uh, of inherent birthright in these places. That's really the most that we can hope to get. They're never going to give us the deed back. We just want them to actually really just uh, tell our story in these places. Mainly the Alamo. Because right now, the Alamo, they only talk about the Cleveland family. Just the white Anglo Jackson part of it. Um, in reality, we had a number of black and Hispanic people fight the Battle of the Alamo that get no credit at all because uh, they weren't considered actual battalion garrison soldiers at that time just because they were black and brown. Um, you know, and that goes back to, like, again, the trilateral myth that we have in Texas that, you know, the indigenous folks, the black folks, and the white folks just had, like, came together and we're going to we're gonna build a great new city and kubaya and, you know, we're all going to get along, you know. Uh, that's the story that most people would like to, to leave from uh, Texas, but we know better than that. Um, you know, that's a dark history, you know, especially depending on who tells it. Um, but for us, as a Papi Lampo Second Nation, we always try and come from a place of abundance. Yes, those atrocities did happen to our people, but that's not all that happened to us. We are stronger because of it. We would have been stronger if it hadn't happened, of course, but it did happen. That's just reality. We're not trying to 
make anyone feel better or bad about it. We're just trying to be accurate so that future residents, future San Antonians, future qualifications can make that decision for themselves. Really make an educated choice. I, I, I have a question that I have kind of battling, kind of about the whole thing. So, first, we were Mexico, then Texas was part of Mexico, but then, then in that time, so you guys consider yourself Mexicans? No. No? No. Okay. Here, so in, the, here in Texas, we have had six different nations flags over us, okay. where they have changed their nationality for us. So here within Texas, well, here in San Antonio, I, early in the first mission, I said we celebrated our 300th anniversary as a, as a city, right? A city San Antonio has existed for 303 years. Archaeologically, our people have evidence of being in this region for 13,000 years. <coughs> and that's really the narrative that we wanted San Antonians to get and Texans to get, that there's a much larger, much more beautiful history. Yes, we're proud to be San Antonians, but that's not all the history. That's just like a small blip in time. Um, and throughout the whole history of Texas, of what we now consider Texas, we've had six different nations claim their rights over us. So, you know, these were someone signed a form, you know, signed a sheet of paper, and we went from being Spanish one day to being French the next, mm. and from going from being French for a few years to then being Confederate. Yeah. So we've had the U.S. flag over us, the French flag, the Confederate flag, the Texas Republic of Texas. Uh, Spanish to Spain and uh, Canary Island flag. So our race has been changed for us a number of times throughout history. So cultural identity is really up to each individual person and at what time in history. Because for, you know, for my grandparents who had always lived on this side of the river for a long time, they had always been here. But because some legislator changed their ideas of what it means to be American or Texan, you know, they went from being Texans one day, Paul Texans one day, to being Mexican citizens the next. You know, and that's not something they had, they didn't have a say in. It didn't affect or really change their lives other than they now had to, you know, um, acknowledge that the government was doing something on their behalf. Mm -hmm. you know, cultural identity.